All right, good morning, everybody. All right. Welcome to Lansing Cover, everybody. Everybody here, everybody watching online, if you're online right now, welcome to Lansing Cover. I'm Pastor Kelly, and uh, today is uh, Communion Sunday. Thanks for joining us. So communion is about honoring Jesus, and we do this right. We do this by remembering Him, and and you, you remember something by focusing on it. I know when I get up in the morning or sometimes late at night, sometimes I try to I have I I, I tell myself you got to remember this. You got to remember this. Um, and sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But um, but you remember things by focusing on it. And Jesus wants us to focus on Him all the time. And the Bible talks about this in the book of Matthew. In the first part, the first part of Matthew 6, 33, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says, seek the kingdom above all else. Seek the kingdom above all else. And this means that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, not the kingdom of our family, not the kingdom of our country, but the kingdom of God should be our first priority. It should be our greatest priority, our highest priority, and the most important priority in life. And some people say, okay, well, should it be above my family? Yes, it should, God should be above your family because if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're honoring God and serving God, God's going to tell you he's not going to do anything that, um, that, uh, that causes division in your family. He's not going to do anything that causes division. He's not going to ask you to do anything that causes division in your marriage or in your relationships with people. So I know that I know that the God, the kingdom of God should be our first priority in our life. If you believe that, I want you to say amen. amen. All right. When Jesus was on earth, his greatest priority was his first, first priority, his greatest priority in every situation was his father's will. His father's will. In John uh, chapter 6, verses 38, Jesus says, For I have come down from heaven. He came down from heaven. Come, came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And that showed us, that showed us Jesus' character. And Jesus' um, Jesus whole life was based on the kingdom, about his father's will. And Jesus modeled to us, he taught us, and he showed us what true living is about. And he also showed us that he was, uh, he showed us a, what a, a fully committed, submitted, and obedient life to the kingdom of heaven uh, looks like. Even to death on a cross. Even to death. So this is why we celebrate communion, to remember Jesus. We want to remember him because he, he, he's our savior, isn't he? He's our savior. If it wasn't for Jesus, I don't know what we would do. So we want to remember everything that he did. We want to remember his life, his legacy, his obedience, his choices. And this is why his command is so, is so important because Jesus is the bridge to God, to heaven. We don't, you can't know God unless you know Jesus. Amen. All right. And if you could get your elements ready right now, you can get your elements ready right now. If you want to pull up the first uh, layer on, that, uh, on your element cup. And take out your wafer, which represents Jesus' body. And I'm going to be reading, like I usually do, out of the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, in chapter 11, starting with uh, verse 23. And this is the bread right here. This is the bread. This, uh, this is Jesus' body. It represents. It's a symbol of Jesus' body. It says, uh, with verse, um, starting with verse 23, on the night when he was betrayed. The Lord took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. He gave thanks to his father for it. Then he broke it into pieces. Can you break it right now? Snap. And, he, and Jesus said, this is my body, which is given for you, given for us. Do this in remembrance of me. All right, let's pray right now. Dear Jesus, this is this is this is your body right here. We're just we weren't we weren't we weren't there at the at the um, at the cross when you died, but this is your body. This is symbolic of your body, and your body was whipped and beaten and bloodied for us. 
You did it for you did it for our salvation. You did it for our, our relationship with with God. You were the bridge that brought us back together because the bridge at the in the Garden of Eden was broken, and you bridged it. You were the great bridge, um, the bridge uh, maker. So God, thank you for filling in the gap. God, because we couldn't do it because we are born into sin. But you live a sinless life, and because of that, we have we have so many gifts. And one of them is, is healing and, and it's restoration. So God, we just thank you for everything that you purchased by being obedient to death. You can partake. God, I just thank you. I just I ask right now, God, if anybody right now, I know with this morning for pre-service prayer, we, we we pray for some people, we pray for some cancer, we pray for hearts. God, I pray for anything else, God. I pray for anything else that might be affecting anybody here or anybody that's associated with anybody here. God, I pray that you heal it right now in Jesus' name. Because you can do it. You're able. You're more than able. So thank you. God, let it just be a testimony, God, to you're coming back, and we know you're coming back. And let it be a testimony, God. Some, you know, the signs and wonders are not for, they're not always for, they're not for us, God, because we know you, but just they're for unbelievers and for backsliders and people right now that are living in sin. So let it be a testimony to who you are. And Jesus continues in. He continues in verse 25 of Matthew, and he says, in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. Can you peel that back right now, please? Let's pray right now. Dear God, we just, dear, G, dear God, we thank you for your son, though. We thank you for your son because his blood ushered in the, the new covenant. The new covenant. His blood fulfilled the law. His blood, your blood, Jesus, just, it, it, it just, it just, it erased sin. It put us in, in, in right standing with, 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 with your father. So today we just, we celebrate this. We remember this, that, you know what? The blood covers, the blood covers, the blood, um, the blood cleanses, the blood cleans. It doesn't matter what your past is. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what, what sin you've created. I don't care what crime you committed. Jesus paid the price with his blood. He paid the, he paid the price with his blood. And today we just thank you, Jesus, for this new covenant. This new covenant, we don't have to live, we don't have to live, um, we don't have to live in fear, we don't have to live in condemnation, we don't have to live just just um, on eggshells. All we have to do is put our trust and our faith in you, Jesus, who defeated sin and defeated the grave. All right, you can partake. Jesus continues in verse 26 and says, for every time you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Now let's pray, dear God, you're coming again. And, and this is a time to remember. You're, it's always been a time to remember, especially these days when, when, when the, the end of the church age is right around the corner. We can, we, can, we can sense it in our spirit. If your spirit's awake, you know that it's coming to an end pretty soon. So God, I just pray that, I pray that as we take communion and we remember your son, that we just, that we just, we, we, all we, we just, we think about and we remember what everything's about, what our life's about. It's not about, it's not about this or that. It's not about accomplishing tasks, but it's, it's about our relationship with you and making sure that we're right with you. So, God, I just pray that, that today, God, that each one of us, God, that we're right with you, God. And we don't, I don't, we don't know each other's life. We don't know what's going on. But 
I just pray that everybody's right, God. Everybody's right when the trumpet blows and we fly up in the air, that we are ready to go. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Today is, first of all, thanks for being here, my smiley face. I like to have a smiley face. Today is the beginning of Missions Month. Missions Month. So we're going to focus on missions the entire four weeks in January. And the reason we focus on missions each January is because missions should be a part of every Christian's life. Missions should be a part of every Christian's life. Say it with me. Mission should be a part of every Christian's life. It should be a, a part of every Christian's life. Let's turn to the book of the 28th book of Matthew. And it, start, it describes, it describes, it, uh, we're not going to talk about the mission, but we're going to talk about the resurrection because that led to the mission. Matthew 28, verses, starting with verse 1, says, Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, which is Jesus' mother, went out to visit the tomb of Jesus. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake. We just had an earthquake in California, didn't we? We've been having earthquakes all around the world. What? Japan. But we had one in California, too, on Friday. We've been having earthquakes. But this wasn't the same earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone and sat on it. His face, the angel's face, shone like lightning and his clothing was white as snow. But that's a, that's a spectacle right there. That's something that, that would be really very grandiose, I guess. I don't know. It'd be, it'd be a very, really, really crazy thing to see. Let's continue in verse 4. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, like anybody would. And they fell into a dead faint. Because they didn't know what to do. When you see something, sometimes when you experience God, you don't know what to do. Then the angel spoke to the woman. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said it would happen. Come See where his body was lying. So we're seeing this right now. We're, the angel is speaking and said, don't be afraid. You're looking for Jesus. He was crucified, but you're not going to find him. You're not going to find him here. You're not going to find Jesus in here. Let's go to verse 7. Verse 7 right here. It says, and now, and this is directions, and now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, that he was going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I told you. Everybody say remember. We remember Jesus for communion. The angel of the Lord told um, Mary, the two Marys, to remember what I told you. Remember. We have to remember. Remembering is, is a part of life that we have to, we, we have to remember. We have to remember who we are. We have to remember, remember our identity. We have to remember our mission. We have to remember our purpose. We have to remember. And the angel said, remember what I told you. You're going to, Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. And that's where you're going to find him at. And the stage now is set for the disciples to meet Jesus in Galilee. All right, let's go to, let's go to uh, Matthew. Let's go to 16, verse 16 now. 16. And it says, then, then the 11 disciples did what they were supposed to do. What were they supposed to do? They were supposed to leave for Galilee. Going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. You know what? The disciples were obedient. They did what they were told to do. Obedience is a good thing. It's a, it's a, it's a thing that God likes. Verse 17. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some of them doubted. You know, the natural reaction when you encounter Jesus is to worship him. Verse 18, that Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority. Everybody say all authority. I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. 
So God gave his son, God gave his son authority over everything because he defeated sin and death, death and sin. And because, because of this, Jesus has, has every right to do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. He can do what he feels like doing. And the next two verses, they, they, they tell us what Jesus commands his followers to do. He has authority, we don't. Amen, right? He has authority. I don't have. A, I have a, some authority, but he has. He has ultimate authority. Let's go to verse nineteen and twenty. So this is what Jesus, because of his authority that he was given to by the Father, by his Father, by our God. This is what he tells us to do. He says, "Therefore, therefore, therefore." And Jesus is in charge now. And he reveals a truth that requires a proper response from us. When you say, therefore, that's something we, that's a, we, we're, we have to have a response. We have, to, we, have to, we have to do something. And the next thing says, go. Everybody say, go. go. It says, this is, his, this, is what his, his, this is what his command is. It says, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And there's more. And teach. I'm going to say teach. Teach. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this. And this is, the, this, this is, just, a, this is just a statement that Jesus gives to us so we won't have to worry, so we don't have to live with anxiety. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Does that give you? Does that give you confidence? Yes. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The age for us, for Christians, is going to be the end of the church age. So He is with us. We have nothing to fear. We have nothing to worry about. He is with us. If if I'm with you, if somebody's with you, they're with you. But these last verses are the premise for the premise for missions. Matthew. 28, 19, and 20 describe the mission for every Christian. And this is up on the screen right here. The great commission which Jesus command us, commands us to participate in is to make disciples. That is the commandment. That is the mission that we have been given. Right? We've been given this mission. And the definition of a disciple is one who adheres to the teaching of another. Adheres to the teaching of another. And adhere means to comply, to heed, and obey. Discipleship is a process that starts at conversion and continues on. Saying the sinner's prayer is just the beginning of your walk. Amen. It's a starting point. It's a starting point. It's, it's like the block. It's the foundation that you begin with. But it's the beginning. And, you, and it's because it's the foundation, you build upon it. You build upon it with God's word. You build upon it by using your gifts. You build upon it. But you build upon it. You don't just lay a foundation and expect to live in a house, do you? You have to build upon it. But I believe, I believe this is where many Christians, they, they start out wrongly. They, 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 they're taught many. There's many Christians and there's many churches right now that are, they, 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 they teach and they, they, and, they, and they get this, this watered-down doctrine to present, that presents a fake Jesus. You know what? Jesus is not, Jesus is not all, uh, he, he's, he, he's depicted by a lot of Christians in their minds and, and what they think about him and stuff. Is, is he's not even real. He, it's like a Hallmark movie. He's real, but the, the depiction of, of Jesus is a fake Jesus. Jesus loves us. He gives us grace. He gives us mercy. But he also expects from us. He expects. Everybody say expects. He expects from us. He expects us to live kingdom focused lives. In order for this to happen, you have to put in the time and effort to understand things. You know, and, and I think about this when I was writing this sermon. I was thinking about this. You don't go to school for only one year, for only one year, and expect to know how to write a research paper. 
It takes time. It takes development. Saying you get out of kindergarten, you're not writing a research paper. You're not getting a master's or PhD. You gotta learn. You gotta continue learning and growing and growing and growing and learning and learning. Amen. You gotta learn, you gotta develop and grow your writing skills. And as you do this, your writing begins to get better and your writing matures. And this increases your proficiency level. We wanna be proficient at whatever we do, amen. I wanna be proficient. I wanna be a proficient at uh, understanding the Bible, right? You read it because you wanna understand it. You wanna be proficient in it. Somebody asks you a question, you wanna tell them an answer that is, that is, that is truthful and it's not made up, right? I'm not gonna make I'm not gonna make some stuff up. I'll just tell you I don't understand it if I don't understand it. But an increase in proficiency means it's, it, it's a sign of forward movements. And this is up on the screen right here. God wants forward movement from us. He wants forward movement from us. And growth and maturity are indicators of health because anything healthy grows. Anything healthy grows. Plant a plant a plant. And see if it's not if you don't take care of it, it's not going to grow anything. It's just going to sit there. It's just going you're going to look at it. It's going to be in a state of death. But anything healthy grows, and anything not unhealthy, anything that's not healthy doesn't grow. It's the lack of growth and maturity that keeps God's kingdom stagnant. It's it's the lack it's the lack of growth and maturity that king that keeps God's um, kingdom stagnant. And this is up on the screen right here. Christianity, Christianity only prospers when disciples mature and embrace discipleship. You understand that? And when you think about it, the church started way back in Acts. It's still going. I'm not saying that it's I'm not saying that it's it's prospering, at least, at least the Western church, but but it's still going. And it could be better. But we have a job to do. We have a job to do. We have to, we're called to make disciples. And discipleship only happens when you're all in. And this is why I, this is why I, I respect missionaries so much. Because missionaries who accept the, the call, they're all in. You have to be, you have to be all in. Because if you think about it, if you think about it, many missionaries are, they're, they're called to places that are dangerous and undesirable. And, but they still go because God has called them to that destination. Amen. Amen. I'm saying dangerous and undesirable. You know what? We live in Michigan. It's not desirable right now to live here because it's getting cold. But just think about it, a place that's really hot and humid and no AC. You're sweating. How many of you all like to sweat? You know what? If we live somewhere else and stuff, you know what? Everybody in, in church would be bringing a towel for their head around their shoulder because it would be hot. Or even cold. But, we, but thank God we have heat. Amen? We have heat. We have cheers. We have pews. Thank God. But... Today, I'm, just, I'm going to focus on the reality of going. And the title of today, our message, today's message is called Go. It's not, it's not nothing fancy. It's just G-O. Everybody say go. Go. Everybody say G-O, go. G-O, go. Okay, good. We can spell. We can, we can do this. All right. I want to pray, then I'm going to get right into this message because this is a message um, it's, it's, it, it goes with our, our mission, our missions month, but it's just it's something that we are called to do. We are called to go. So let's pray if you could join me in prayer. Dear God, I thank you for today. God, I thank you for this message, God, that you've given to me. God, thank you. Just thank you for speaking to me, God, because I just want to. I want to. I want to give your word. I want to. I want to speak your word, and I want to preach and teach your word. Everything you want me to do. So God, thank you for this message, God. I pray that it would just. It would just. It would set off. It will set off something in our spirit um, and, 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 and motivate us to just do what you called us to do. Your son told us to go make disciples. That's part of the Great Commission. So God, just help us have that desire. God, just make it this desire great in our spirit, God. So we just do what you call us to do, which is go make disciples. So God, thank you. I pray that you anoint this word. In, in 
Jesus name, amen. All right, so the great commission is what every believer is called to do, is called to, is called to. Everybody's called to this. If you're a believer, if you're a believer, you're called to the great commission. And I want to, I want to, um, uh, actually, I must have not admitted it. I'm going to read this again one more time. Matthew 28, 19 to 20. This is the Great Commission. It says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. Be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So, for the month of January, we're gonna we're just gonna dive into Matthew 28, uh, verse 19 and 20. We're gonna dive in. I just wanna I wanna hit it. Sometimes you sometimes you know what? Sometimes you gotta you gotta you gotta massage it something, massage like a knot out your leg. Don't you? You sometimes when you when you say like I got a, I got something that's hurt, I got something that I need a massage, sometimes you know why you'd be like, okay, one minute. No, I need like I need like a couple days on it. So I want to massage, I want to massage, and I want to just get into the scripture, really dissect it, tear it apart with um, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. So Jesus starts off right here, so we're going to get, so Jesus starts off the great, starts out the great commission by telling us to go. It's up on the screen, you can't miss it right now. It's in, it's like in adult letters, G-O, go. It's big. Okay, that one of those Bibles for people that, you know, sometimes they, they have, they struggle with small print, which I am starting to struggle with. And, and it says, "Go" means, and, 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 and "go." The definition of "go" means it means to move one place to another, to travel. It requires action. It requires movement. If you go somewhere, if you go, if you go do something, it, you have to. You got to step forward. You got to do something. It means I don't care if it's like a little step. I don't care if it's a snail's pace. Snails go just really slow, but they still go. But go, go mean it requires being all in. And this is up on the screen right here. And for the word that God gave to me for Lansing Calvary for 2024 was all in. And we, we talked about this last week, but I want to share this again. And all in is based on Luke 9, 23. And, uh, and this is um, this is our verse that we read yet last week. We're going to read it again. But in Luke 9, 23, which is, which is about being all in, it says, If any of you wants to be my follower... You must give up your own way, take up your cross daily, and follow me. And Jesus was talking to his disciples about what it means to follow him. You have to give up your own way. And that's tough for us. I know, I know some of us, we want like uh, when we're praying and stuff, we talk about the old nature. Yes, it's a going against the old nature because the old nature wants to go one way, and God wants us to take us another way. And it's a, a battle that we, we're always in. And you have to just choose correctly. Which means step on the flesh. Step on it. Kick it. Punch it. Do whatever you gotta do to, to, to do it. But the, I think the big one of the best ways is to pray about it. Pray. Flesh, I put you down. My spirit and your spirit will rise up. You gotta, you gotta just, you gotta just, you gotta put it down. But it's a choice to put it down. It's just like it's a choice to pray. But Jesus was telling, he was talking to disciples, and he says, you got to give up your own way. You have to give up your own direction and path. And, and following Jesus literally means giving up everything. Everybody say, everybody, everybody say everything. Every, and everything means all things. Mm, all things. All things. When you talk about when you talk about something about all, sometimes that does scare people because when you say all, that means that means all things, that means everything, that means you have to you have to give it just give it over and release it, right? And when 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 you talk when you're talking about everything, which means all things, nothing is off limits. There's no restrictions or constraints. And that's tough. That's tough for us. For us. United States folks, right? It's tough for us. No restrictions or constraints. And I want to turn to, I want to turn, turn to um, Luke 9.23. It's already up on the screen right now. Okay, never mind. I want to turn to Luke 14.26. Um, it says, and this is about everything. 
Anyone who comes to me but release, re 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 refuses to let go of father, mother, spouse, children, brother, sisters, yes, even oneself, can't be my disciple. So being a disciple of Jesus is about release. It's about release. It's about, it's about releasing anything that's going to hold you back. And the, the, the truth is, the truth about it is it's like, there are many things in the world that can that can and do hold us back from being all in. Amen. There's lots of things that hold us back. And, and, and you might, I'm saying, there's things that hold me back too. Sometimes I know I have to catch myself. Why am I doing this? Why am I just not going forward? Why, why am I doing this? And these are the times where they, they things are things are catching you. Things are hooking you. And Luke 14, 26, um, it, it, point, it, pinpoint, it pinpoint, pinpoints relationship areas. It talks about family and friends and, and people close to you. They can hold you from going back to the destination God has for you. Friends can do it, especially family, blood. Blood keeps you from obeying the God. Blood keeps you from doing what God's asked you to do. Amen? Let's be true about it. So sometimes our, our blood, our sometimes our family, our relatives, our friends, they keep us from fulfilling the destiny God has for you. But let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. This, this is Luke 14, 33. Let's go deeper. It says, so then none of you can be my disciple who does not give up all his or her own possessions. For some individuals, a, a, a stumbling block or a snare is going to be a relationship. For other people, it's your possessions. And let's be real. People like their stuff. People like their stuff. People like, they like houses. They like cars. They like jewelry. Don't they? People like stuff. They like boats. They like guns. They like many things. But Jesus tells us that in order to follow him, we have to let it let go of all of it. Now that's a tough thing. That's a tough thing to, to deal with. That's tough. Jesus says, let go of everything. Let go of all of it. In Luke 14 and 26 and 33, which we just read, are two reasons why I respect missions and missionaries. Because when God calls you somewhere, at times, many times, you got to leave family behind. Are you willing to do that, though? Are you willing to leave family? Are you leaving, willing to leave friends? Are you willing to leave your prized possessions that you had in your family for 30 years or 40 years? Are you willing to leave that behind? And also, besides friends, family, friends, and possessions, are you, are you willing to leave comfort behind? Because co leaving comfort behind is tough. Like we said, though, we, we, you know, we have a nice climate-controlled uh, environment right now, but are you willing to leave this um, for heat, extreme heat, or extreme coldness? Are you willing to leave um, this behind for going to a country where you have you know nothing about? You don't even speak the same language. You don't know anybody there. They eat different food than you eat. They speak a, speak a different language. These are some things that you really got to think about when Jesus says go. But everything that I'm talking about, it's the very heart of Jesus. Missions is the heartbeat of God. Amen. Pa pump, missions, pa pump, missions, pa pump, missions. Missions is the heartbeat of God. And missions is about taking the gospel everywhere we go and sharing it with others. Amen. And for some people, 
For some people, this is this might be a foreign land. This might be, and I know, and I've talked to lots of people. This might be a foreign land. It could be Africa. It could be. It could be. It could be Australia. It could be somewhere. I don't really know. But for others, it'll be in your neighborhood and at your workplace. Take the gospel where you go. But no matter where God asks you to go, if it's here in America, if it's another state, if it's not Michigan, if it's another country, another continent, it doesn't matter. Jesus has called his followers to make disciples of all men, women, and children everywhere they go. Amen. And the Great Commission is about making disciples. It's about, it's about teaching others about God and his kingdom. And it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter where you go. What matters, um, what matters most, um, what matters most is that, is that, I think I skipped something. What matters most is that you understand that you have a mission. That's what matters most. Doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter what time zone you're in, but what matters most is that you have a mission. And this mission is to tell the world the good news of the kingdom of the God. And we're just learning about Revelation downstairs, and it was actually made my heart, maybe my heart ache and my spirit ache because people that are people that get left behind, and I know it's a series, it's a book series, it's some movies and stuff, but people that get left behind are going to face some bad times. We we learned today 75 pound pieces of hell. That's heavy. 75 pound pieces of hell falling from the sky. We're not talking about little two inch like nuggets. We're talking about 75 pound pieces of hell are gonna fly from the, fly out of the sky and hit people in the head and kill them. We're talking about the trumpets, the bowls, the seals. We're talking about destruction on earth, man. It's gonna be, it's gonna be pure hell on earth, isn't it? Pure hell on earth. And we know this stuff, don't we? We know this stuff, don't we? Do we understand it? If you understand it, say yes. We understand this stuff. That's why it's our responsibility. It's our mission. It's our command that we tell people, as many people as we can, about this. But the reality that many people don't even, it, just, it goes over the head because they don't have no understanding of it. When I was younger, I didn't understand algebra. It flew over my head. But when I got an understanding of algebra, I could teach it. I could talk about it, right? You know we come every week to church. We, 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 we do studies and we, we learn about this stuff. And we know about it. We know about this. We know about the reality. We know how it ends. The book of Revelation, that's how it ends. Revelation revealing to us the reality of, of the truth and reality about mankind. We're not here forever. We're not gonna be here forever. I'm glad everybody here is doing great, but it's everything that you have right now, you're not gonna have and you're not gonna need. Amen. It's about the mission. It's about the mission. It's about telling as many people as we can about the good news, about the gospel, about the truth of life, because people are seeking it. There's so many people I know that just, they, 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 they're nobody, People are just, they, they tell me things. Yeah, you know, I believe in this and this and that. Or then you tell them, and it's kind of like, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But you know what? You're planting seeds. You're throwing seeds out. Every day we have a chance to throw seeds. And when you're done and you're gone, you're not going to be able to throw no more seed out. So throw seeds, people. Throw seeds. But right now, I want to, right now I want to, um, right now I want to share Three ways to stay on mission. Three ways to stay on mission. Because you know what? We know we have a mission, and and you might get on mission, but you gotta stay on mission. I, like I tell people about, like you know, about people that talk to me about being debt free. It's one thing to get debt free, and there's another thing to stay debt free, right? 
But these are three ways to stay on mission. And let's start with number one. It comes on the screen. Start the day off with prayer. And I know this, these, are, these seem like generic and these seem like, okay, well, you know, I could have thought these myself. But these are some really powerful things. Pray and ask God if there's anyone specifically that he wants you to focus on for the day. Um, I've been in prayer many times. And for some reason, a person, maybe a person that I talk to on a regular basis. Sometimes it's a person I, really, I talk to rarely. But a person comes, they, they just, they just, God brings them to remembrance for me um, as I'm praying for them, and there's a reason for it. Um, I believe that, I believe that when you pray and somebody comes to remembrance when you're praying, there, that is a sign, that is a confirmation that you are supposed to reach out to that person some way. And Sometimes it's, it's through prayer. Sometimes it's you wake up in the morning and you have something impressed in, um, on, in your spirit to call them or reach out to them in some way. Has it happened to you before? You just sometimes you just wake up and you're just like, I don't know why I'm thinking about, I don't know why I'm thinking about um, Bob or Billy or, or, or Sally or, or, or Susie. But some reason, you know what, it's just like those are the times where, you know, God is calling you for that person for this time moment of time to reach out to them. Amen? Amen? I'm saying sometimes, I know it's happened to me many times, sometimes, I just, sometimes it's just a prayer, I just pray for that person. Um, and that's, this is one way that God is keeping you on mission. Because living every day for yourself is not being on mission. God's, gonna, God's got somebody and sometimes we, I pray about it. At other church, we used to pray, who does God, who does God want us to, um, to reach out to? And we go on these things called treasure hunts. And sometimes God would give us a word. Other times, um, other times it would be, it'd be different ways. But sometimes, you know, we go on treasure hunts to look for people because God's creation is his treasure. You know that, right? They're his treasure. And we go on treasure hunts. And sometimes, I remember one time going on a treasure hunt with um, the church in Jackson, and I remember we were praying at the church, and I'm like, God, who do you want us to, and all I could hear is toys. And I remember saying, I don't know what, I don't know about toys. Toys are everywhere. They're buyers, they're at, they're at, they're at Kmart, whatever, at the time it was open. But after that, then after that, we were driving. It was a group of us, we were driving, and we saw a toy, um, a toy, what, is he, what do you call it? A toy gathering? What is it called? Convention? Yeah, toy convention at the fairgrounds. And I was like, God, that's what you were talking to me about. This is what you want me to do. And we went in there. We had to pay some money. We did it. And I remember running into somebody that I kind of knew and I didn't know. But that was the person I believe God had on my heart for that day. And I was just obedient to what God asked me to do. And I talked to this person, and I think I ended up praying for that person. But I don't know. But all I know is I heard the word toy. And it started with prayer. If I didn't, if I would have went into it without praying, I would have just, I would have bypassed that because God wouldn't give me, give me the word of toy. And you might think I'm crazy, but this is, that's how God works a lot of the times. Prayer keeps us on mission. And that's why we need to have an active prayer life. Because God talks to you. He's talking to you all the time. Sometimes we're just not listening correctly. Or we're just, we're just like letting distractions get in our way. But start off prayer. Start off the day with prayer. That's one way to stay on mission. Number two, study the word. And God's word keeps you accountable. It keeps us accountable. It's the basis for judging correctly. We want to judge correctly. If you want to live a life pleasing to God, you, you, you have to know what he expects and he requires. And he expects us to do many things, including bringing heaven to earth. And when we bring when we bring heaven to earth, God's kingdom expands. And if you think about it, when I was writing the sermon, I was thinking about it. It's awesome to think that that we're one of many, one of many millions of churches that have existed in the history of the church age. Lansing Calvary 
is existing right now. But we, we're one of many millions of churches that have existed. Many have came, many, many have closed. Amen? But isn't that awesome that we're part of this church age that's going to come to a, a screeching halt um, at the rapture? There's, there might be some churches, but the church age itself will be gone. That's, that's awesome. But it's, it, 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 it's, it's awesome because, because of people who have studied the word and put it into practice by becoming kingdom builders. You know what? There's somebody, I bet you somebody here, so everybody sitting here, there was somebody praying for you at one point in your life before you came to, for Jesus. That's awesome, isn't it? That's awesome. Because if they would have prayed for you, and they want to break God's word, and they want to live out the life of a disciple, you wouldn't be sitting here today. You'd be sitting thick in, th thick in sin, doing sinful things, and on your way to hell. But thank God. Amen. 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 Woo. All right. Let's go to the third way. The third way to stay on mission is to stay alert. My gosh. I believe, I believe there's many individuals who are seeking Jesus. The, they are, the, right, the fruit is right. The right, the right fruit and they're ready to be picked. They're ready to be picked. And that's why we have to stay alert and we got to keep our spiritual, our spirits open. We got to look and listen for opportunities to share the gospel. They're there all the time. People, pe there's opportunities all the time of, 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 of there's opportunities for each of us to share the gospel and God doesn't always have to say you right there I want you to share the gospel with him we just got to open our we got to open our spirits up there I mean I've done this many times I've heard people in line people at stores saying you know what I'm hurting you know what I, I, I'm going through this, this situation in my life and I offer them prayer God didn't say Richmond Pray for that person. I just opened, I just was listening. I was alert and I offered prayer. And many of them, most of them accepted the prayer, but some of them didn't. But you know what? I don't, it doesn't matter. All I'm doing is being obedient to what God's told me to do. Amen. I was being alert. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter either way. But we should always be looking for opportunities to bring heaven to earth. And you never know what your prayer or words of encouragement would do for somebody else. Amen. And we're talking about it could change the trajectory of a person's life by you being alert, by you being obedient. It could save somebody from death. I know a pastor, a pastor told me one time he was uh, he was at a conference late at, at um, on a Friday or Saturday night. And he felt God said, you know what, go through this drive through this hamburger place. I don't even know. He said he wasn't even hungry, but he said he felt like God told him to do it. He went through there and he talked to the person taking the money. And he said, to, you know what, he said, you know, what? I don't know if this is kind of weird to you, but I feel like God said, I need to I need to come here. I'm not even hungry. And she's just like. I'm glad you did because I told God if I didn't, if I, if somebody didn't come to me tonight, I was going to kill myself after work. That is, that is powerful. She could have been dead. She could have committed suicide. But because of, of this, this pastor's obedience and him being alert to the spirit, it saved her life. And he didn't take credit for it. The God he serves takes credit for it. Amen. But as we close, I want to reiterate something. Missions is important to God. It's something, if something is important to God, it should be important to us, right? Amen. He's the creator of everything. He's the maker. He's the beginning and end. If it's, it's important to the God, the person who made us, it should be important to us because we serve him. He's our dad. Jesus is, is, is his son. But missions should be important. And, and missions, is in, it, it is important to me personally, and it's also important to our church because we currently support 16 missionaries and one missions training organization. And 16 missionaries, we support um, 11 or foreign missionaries and five are U.S. based. And as I said, we have one missions training organization. They train the missionaries. 
to, um, to get them equipped. Everybody say equipped. Equipped, and if that after the period of time where they where they where they, they they've been taught um, taught to a certain standard, they release them. They release them. They 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 go into the field and they do what they're called to do. But I want to. I just want to ask everybody to pray to pray frequently for our missionaries that we partner with because they need our they need our prayers. Because some of these people, we know, I know missionaries that were in, in Israel um, at our old back at our uh, church I used to attend, and Israel was dark because a lot of people that were there, a lot of the, the Jews there were not believers. They were, they were, they they practiced Judaism, and they didn't, they weren't, they didn't, they didn't believe that Christ Jesus was the Savior. So it was a very dark place, and you would think, well, it's Israel, it's Israel. Well, it was dark. It was dark. So they need lots of prayer. They need our prayers every day. Let's let's just let's show, let's make it a let's make it a um, I don't like to say a habit or routine, but let's let's make it um, let's make put it in our in our prayer our prayer list or on our prayer list and on our prayer bucket to pray for our missionaries. But they also need our financial backing. They also need our financial backing. And I know I'm saying we know like and sometimes they're, they're stepping into places where you know. They're stuffing in the places they just they need our support. So our current monthly support for our missionaries is five hundred dollars per month, and and this comes from our general fund, which is our tithes and offerings. And my goal, which was my goal for twenty twenty two and twenty last year twenty twenty three, was to fully support missionaries mission giving through our monthly support. So I want everybody. Um, I want everybody to pray and, and seek out about giving to missions. Um, if you're interested in giving to missions, there is a missions pledge form back there at the, uh, um, there's a pledge card on the table. And I want to, actually, I want to go over that pledge card with you right now. If you can, if it comes up. See if it comes. <laughs> um, uh, right here it is, right here. So this is the missions plus card right here. So this is the missions plus card. I actually have one up here. So this, this is this is what it says. Lansing Calvary Assembly of God Missions Plus. In order to fill the Great Commission, fulfill the Great Commission, Lansing Calvary partners with missionaries. Like I said, 16 missionaries and one missionary missions training organization all over the world to spread the gospel. And or in partner with this commission, I and this is where this is where prayer comes into um, play. Um, I want you to pray about it. I want you to pray about making a commitment to our missionaries that are um, part of Assemblies of God. And and when and when you when, when God gives you something, if he, if He gives you something, you know, if He does give you something, um, I want you to I'd like you to fill these one of these out right here. And this is I commit to making the following pledge pledge to missions. And it has your name, and it's the top portion has your name, and it has the amount. Then it has your monthly, bi monthly, and weekly. And that's for you to keep on your refrigerator or on something where you're going to look at it. So you remember. Remember, like what we talked about earlier, remember. We remember communion. We remember, we're called to remember. It's important. And the bottom portion goes to the church. So we know how much is coming into to the church for monthly missions giving. This, I'm saying, my wife and I, we're partnering. We're going to partner with missions because I know it's important. Every time, tongue, tribe, and nation. We want to support missions because of that. The gospel has to be spread. It's going to be spread. And we're going to partner $100 again like we did last year. So um, this is the part right here. So like I said, the top part goes to you. And the bottom part goes to the church. So we know um, for, for uh, financial accounting reasons um, how much people are going to pledge. So... Just all I can ask is to be in prayer, be in prayer for that, um, and uh, pray about it. And uh, um, you know, the rest is that. The rest is that. Whatever God gives to you, all I can say is just, you know what? Pray about it, and whatever He tells you, all I can say is be obedient. Amen. Amen. Be obedient. That's all I can. That's all I can say right now, because that's that's what it's all about is being obedient. So right now, if you could join me in prayer right now, we're gonna pray right now, and. Uh,
And we're going to we're, and we're be ending very shortly. So if you could join me. All right. Dear God, we just we thank you for today, God. We thank you for this, this message, God. And God, I just want to pray. I want to pray about your, the first part of the, the Great Commission, which is about going. God, we know the why of going. We know that it's to advance the kingdom of God to bring, to bring heaven on earth. But God, we, we ask you for more workers in the field. We ask you for more people that are called to missions. We, call, we ask you for um, people that are called to um, something in their, in their neighborhood. Maybe, maybe called to something in their church. God, we need workers. God, we know we need workers. We need workers. We need labor or laborers. So God, just bring them, bring them here, God. Or right now, just God, we have people here and stuff. God, just give them a desire to be a labor, to labor for the kingdom of God. God, I pray that. Um, God, I pray that if, you know if it's somebody here that's caught to international missions, God, that you would you would tell them that so they would go because that's what you called us to do is go. Um, God, if, it, if it's another state, God, if it's just something locally, God, but God, I just pray that you would just. God, that you would just speak to each one of us, God, about 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 going. Uh, speak, speak to each one of us about um, funding the missions, the missionaries that we find, God, because they're doing a the work that we can't do. And I'm, I, you haven't called me to another country yet. If you do, I'll go and we'll go. But God, we can partner with you, and we can partner with missions by just. Um, Financially supporting these missionaries that are impacting the lives of others, of, of the lost and the, of the unsaved. So, God, um, I thank you for our missionaries that, that are out there in the field right now, God. Just give them strength, God. Give them courage. Give them boldness, God. In this, in this time that we're in right now, where there's a lot of, a lot of darkness is, 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 is saturating like environments, God. But you know what, God? You caught us to change atmospheres. And we can do that. But God, we know that, like, you're, that, like Matthew 28 says, you're going to be with us all the way to the end of age. So God, I just thank you, God, for all the missionaries. I thank you for everybody um, who supports missionaries, God. And I, I, just, I just ask you, God, that you continue just, um, just, just providing for us so we can provide for them. God, you're saying this is where we're getting, we're getting, we're getting to the end of the, the getting to the end of the age, God. And we gotta continue, just continue partnering with you, God. Don't, I pray that we keep our eyes on you, we stay focused, God, and we just we don't let anything get um, just distract us from from our from the from our from the, the Great Commission, which is to make disciples. So God, thank you for everything that you're doing. Right now, I just want to ask anybody right now, if uh, you know the, the Bible says. Um, that the Bible talks about heaven and hell. The Bible says um, the way to a relationship with God is, is, is by making Jesus Lord of your life. So I want to ask anybody right now, um, if, you know, because if you died, if Jesus is not, if Jesus, you have not accepted Jesus as your Savior, the Bible make, it makes it pretty plain and simple that, that you're not going to enter the gates of heaven. So right now, I want to ask anybody right now, would you like to make Jesus Lord of your life right now? Because that's really what keeps people from the, the gates of heaven is lordship. Who is the lord of your life? Because we struggle with that. But right now I want to give you the opportunity to make Jesus lord of your life. That, but that means giving up everything, all things. But the, you know what? There's, but the, the, the benefit of following Jesus outweighs everything else in life. Any type of material thing, any type of relationship. Because God is all you need. Jesus is all you need. So if this is you, I want you, I'd like you to repeat after me if you'd like to receive Jesus as your Savior. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask for forgiveness. Right now, I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I believe that God raised him from the dead. Father God, Thank you for saving me and giving me true life, giving me real life. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, this with you, and you just, um, if you just uh, recited this salvation prayer, you meant it, you just, you just received salvation, and that's conversion. 
there's a lot for, there's a lot to a lot to keep on going for this is the foundation this is the foundation of your life right now so what I would suggest and encourage find a church if you have no church come here to Lansing Kilby we'd like to walk with you in this new walk you're gonna have lots of questions because I know you are whenever, whenever you come to you receive salvation there's a lot of questions all of us did when we when we came to salvation and we still have questions also we've been some of us been walking with God for 30 40 50 years we're always going to have questions, but that's part of the growth, growth process, the growth, the maturity. Uh, for the rest of us here, um, does anybody have any prayer needs? Anybody have any prayer needs? Anybody have anything that's been bothering them? Nothing? Anything? This is your time. This is your time right now. I, I know one person. I know one person right now who's not with us right now. We need to pray for her. This is the time we come together, and we can't. We don't get to do this that all the time because we we have congregational um, prayer. This is when believers get together and they pray and they ask God for whatever it is, a miracle for for for, for healing. So this is the important time. Don't let it slip you by. Go after it. If you got something that you need, tell God about it. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so I know one thing we're praying for is health right now, but if you have nothing else, we'll, we'll go from there. Um, so if you could join me in prayer. Dear God, I just thank you for today, God. Um, I want to bring you, I want to bring, um, I want to bring um, health, um, uh, a health issue to you, God. I pray, God, um, that you restore well, actually, three people sounds. God, I pray. I, pray, I want to pray for um, that you just you 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 heal the cancer, God. God, that you heal the heart, God. That you heal the uh, whatever the other issue is, God. I don't, you know what it is. I don't know what it is. But God, I'm just praying for total restoration, God. For total healing, God. And God, I pray against that spirit right now, God. You cannot the devil. You cannot have this. The spirit. The spirit of. Um, the spirit of, of, of sickness, God, you are gone right now. You are gone. You don't belong to each nobody. You don't belong to us, God. You, God, you, your son died for us um, so we could have health. We could have good health. We can have a fruitful life. So, God, I'm just praying right now. I'm asking right now. I'm asking that, that you restore everything that was taken. And you give them, you give them their health back that, that you promised us. So, God, thank you for what you're doing um, in our lives, God. But, God, we're just going to continue. We're going to continue praising you and worshiping you and studying, learning about you and following you in 2024. God, we're going to go after you harder than we did in 2023. So, God, I pray for all the families. I pray for all the children, God. And I pray for anybody who's associated with Lansing Calvary. Protect them, God. Bring them, give them peace and give them joy in their lives right now, God. And... God, you are worthy of it all, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.